to another episode of POV Italian. Tonight we're going to make a tomato bruschetta. Uh, with the, we're going to use some shallots and some fresh basil. My fresh basil is looking a little bit weak, so we're going to we're going to substitute a little bit of pesto in uh, with with our uh, our basil. So in this episode, I thought I'd share a little bit about my uh, favorite cooking shows, which uh, we, we we watch the Food Network and the Cooking Channel a lot in this household. Far and away, my most favorite show is um, Extra Virgin. It's on the Cooking Channel and it stars uh, Gabrielle Corcus and Debbie Mazur. Um, they started with a web series as well. Their web series was called Tuscan Gun. Still on YouTube. Check it out. It's great. Great series. Um, you know, other uh, outside of Extra Virgin, well, yeah, outside of Extra Virgin, we also watch Chopped a lot. Love Chopped. Uh, Diners, drive-ins, and dives with Guy Fieri, and then Guy Fieri's show that where he cooks as well. I think it's called a, a Guy's Big Bite. Um, but if it's on if it's on the Food Network or Cooking Channel, we're probably watching it. No, I don't watch a lot of baking. So anyway, let's get started. We're gonna make again. We're gonna make a, a tomato bruschetta. Real simple. Very few ingredients, but you get big flavors out of these few ingredients. It's kind of like a Tuscan style. Um, which is, you know, the Tuscan style is few ingredients, fresh ingredients, and, and big flavors. Now, we're kind of pushing the fresh ingredient a little bit because it is winter, so it's hard to get a good tomato here in Ohio. Um, but we'll make do with the tomatoes that we got. So, we're going to get started. Okay, let's take a look at our ingredients today. We've got five room of tomatoes, a yellow tomato, really just for collar, um, an heirloom tomato, and an old hothouse tomato. Now, it's... You know, as I said earlier, it is winter in Ohio, so good tomatoes are hard to come by, so we're going to make do. I like to use a mix of tomatoes. You get some better flavor. You know, this past summer, we had a nice garden out back, so I had, you know, really good heirloom tomatoes, beefsteak tomatoes, and Roma tomatoes, so we, we would always just make it with a mix. Um, also, I have a shallot, and we're going to use some garlic. Uh, I bought some living basil. It's not living very well, um, but we're gonna salvage what we can, and then we are going to uh, substitute in some pesto to make up for our, our lack of fresh basil. And then olive oil, salt, and pepper. And we have a good uh, Chianti Classico that really doesn't go in the, um, in the recipe. It kind of goes in this cup, so we can have something to drink while we make this. And of course, uh, uh, last but not least, uh, a French baguette. Hold on while I get a sip of wine here. That's good. Um, anytime you cut tomatoes, you should use a serrated knife so you don't bruise the skin of the tomato. So we've got our serrated knife. Now I'm going to pause real quick, kind of reorganize the work area here, get a few things off the table, and then we'll get started. Okay, let's get started on chopping our tomatoes. I got my smaller cutting board here because we're going to seed these kind of as we go. And it's just a lot easier to take the smaller cutting board over to the sink and get rid of the seeds. So we get rid of the tops and the bottoms of our tomatoes and we're going to cut them in ah, right around a quarter inch thick slices. If they're a little more, a little less, doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and do this for the rest of our romas. So once we get all of our romas done, again, we've got five romas here. What we're going to do is we're going to get these seeded. Here's the way I do it. Again, may or not be the best way to do it because it does take me a while to make this. But I just kind of cut the seeds, get them out of the way, and then just kind of chop them into semi-uniform pieces here. Again, what we do, some of these hot house tomatoes look a little little underripe, which, you know, when you pick them in California or Ecuador or wherever they're getting these tomatoes, they will tend to be like that. So again, we just do this and we're going to do this for the rest of our aromas. Okay, we finished with our aroma tomatoes. Now we're going to go ahead and cut these three up again. We're just really using the yellow tomato, the good flavor, but we're Really the intent for this one is just for collar. Same thing, we're gonna ditch the top and the bottom. 
give or take quarter inch slices, some thinner, some thicker. It's bruschetta, so that piece is probably too thin, but oh well. Our wonderful hothouse tomato. This one feels a little soft, so I'm gonna cut the pieces a little thicker. And then our heirloom tomato. Got this one sliced. All right. Let's start with our yellow tomato. Now, I was sharing a little bit about my favorite cooking shows. And of course, you know, Gabrielle Corcus being my one of my favorite chefs. And of course, I mentioned that we like chopped. Chopped. Love that show. Would kill to be on it someday, but would be the first person eliminated because I just don't know enough. Um, but my favorite, my favorite judges on there, of course, are Scott Conant. Love him. He's awesome. Um, Alex Guarnaschelli, I believe her name is pronounced. Can't, don't really know the exact pronunciation. Um, but anyway, we watch a lot of chop. Now these are going to be hard to de-seed just because they're completely full of seeds really the only reason you see them is to, so your 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 um, bruschetta doesn't get overly moist so we're going to make do and use as much of those as we can so even though we can't really get them seeded if we can you know if we get a big clump of seed we'll just kind of scrape it off to the side there and if we don't we don't so i'm going to get these tomatoes chopped up and get them in the bowl and then we'll be right back all right we have our tomatoes all cut up and in the bowl next for a quick sip we are going to do our shallots and garlic now if you've not worked with shallots before they're really just kind of like a tender onion and just like an onion we've got to get the skin this outer skin off of them a lot of times when you get a shallot, they'll have like two little cloves of shallot for shallots for lack of a better way of putting it. So we will get these skinned a lot of times. It's easier just to get them skinned if you just get the top and the bottom of them off there and then they kind of peel real easy. Get the skins out of the way. These can be little boogers. Just like onions. They'll burn your eyes. They'll make your eyes water. So you'll probably hear me sniffling here very shortly. Might hear my dog in the background there. She's getting a drink of water here in the kitchen. There she is. That would be Jinxie, one of our two little Shih Tzus. We have Jinxie and Josie. And a cat named Louie. So, yeah, this one's a little bruised. We'll cut the bruise out of it and use what we can. Sometimes that skin will just be a bugger to get off. We're gonna take this outer layer here off real quick. Just from where it's bruised, yeah, that's a lot better underneath that second layer. A little bit of shallot goes a long way. So with our shallots, I don't have my bigger knife, so we're just gonna make do with this knife. We wanna cut these real thin. And I am actually gonna pause and get my chef knife here because it's a little, it's actually what I should be using to chop this onion. Okay, I got my chef knife. It's really what I should have had earlier. The small knife's good for, you know, cleaning, but for chopping, you want your good knife. Now these shallots, because they're small, be careful because you slice yourself. Now we want these pieces real small. And again, you get to see my ultra pathetic knife skills here. I'm sure, you know, once the comments start coming in, I'll get wonderful comments about my knife skills. And my eyes are starting to water because I'm like hovering right above these onions. So we don't have them quite small enough yet. Like them real small. Part of the reason I'm going real slow too on my knife is because it 
I'm using it again. I'm using the chest mount for my GoPro and if I go real fast I tend to shake it a lot. Oh my gosh, my eyes are burning now So anyway, this is how we're gonna chop our onions. Actually, we've got them just about where we want them So Let's just put these right on top of our tomatoes. My eyes are killing me Just scrape them right on. There's a few on the floor But that's all right Okay, now our garlic. Oh my gosh, let's set this way far away. You know what kills the uh, burning in the eyes is a quick sip of wine. All right, my lovely assistant is cleaning up the skins behind me. As I go. Now for this, we'll probably use all oh, four or five nice big cloves of garlic. Just once we tear in, we'll see how fresh these cloves are. All right, so there's our cloves of garlic, maybe. Yeah, that one feels kind of dry and rotten. We'll save that one. Yeah. This. Sometimes it's hard to find good garlic. All right, we'll go with this. Once we get these open, we'll, we'll see how good a quality they are. Easiest way, again, to get the skins off these bad boys. Put them under your knife, crush them, makes them easy to peel, releases some of the oils as well. My eyes are still burning. So again, we're going to peel these real quick and we'll be right back. So we got our, gar our garlic peeled here. One thing we also did is, is on the, uh, this particular uh, garlic, there is a nice hard woody end We've got it off of all of these pieces. This is probably too much garlic for what we're doing here, but we're gonna go ahead and just chop it. I personally don't believe in a, too much garlic, but some folks may not like so much garlic. The great thing about being the cook or cooking this at home, you can make it the way you want. You can make whatever taste you like. If you like a lot of garlic, put a ton of garlic. If you don't like garlic, well, then don't put so much garlic in it. So. We want small pieces, nice and diced up here. These pieces are definitely too big. Let's do a quick chop on this. Now I apologize if my camera shakes, but I want to get this done. And we've just about got it where we want, so. So today, the wife and I, of course we're off work for the winter break, we went and had lunch at the Barcelona restaurant in the German village of Columbus. Really good, highly recommend it. Um, you know, we tend to eat a lot of Italian, but today we decided for lunch we were gonna do something a little bit different. We were returning clothes, particularly the clothes I bought for my wife for Christmas. I jokingly say that she returns all the clothes I buy her for Christmas. Um, I believe this Christmas she did. Um, <laughs> all right, actually, that garlic looks perfect. Go ahead and we're gonna scrape this into our bowl. We now have all of our ingredients in a bowl that's, bowl that's really too small. Um, now what we'll do is we're going to go ahead before I cut up my um, before I cut up my pet my pesto my basil I'm going to go ahead and we're going to salt and pepper again I love to use a coarse grain kosher salt and pepper if you watched one of my earlier videos you know my pepper grinder is on its way out the door it doesn't really do a good job at grinding so it's going to seem like I'm putting a lot of pepper on here but I'm really I'm not that is probably enough pepper, olive oil, love of the olive oil. I don't know how much olive oil. Again, I don't measure a lot. You guys are going to see that. I just do it till it feels right. We'll give this an initial stir. I should have used a bigger bowl, but we're going to make do. Besides, if I make a mess, oh well. 
Alright, now we're going to work on our basil. So, we'll be right back in just a second. Okay, we're back and I did transfer our tomato and shallots and garlic to a little larger bowl. I'm going to just hit it with a little bit more olive oil. And I'm going to go ahead and cut up our basil. I got this living basil. Kroger's was out of basil. I hate to say this. But all they had was this living basil. So I bought it. It bought it yesterday, put it in the fridge, and we weren't real careful when we were uh we made we played some board games and stuff with the kids last night and when we uh made a bunch of side dishes and when we put them in the fridge we weren't real careful and we put some of the items right on my living basil and as you can see it's better days are behind it but we're going to try to save what we can there's not a lot in here worth saving quite honestly a lot of it is lifeless and slimy save that little leaf but really what I, I want to show is again I you know, I, as I shared, I have no culinary experience. Everything I learned, I just kind of learned from watching different shows and whatnot. And I always had a problem when I first started with cutting basil. Because it's a leaf. It's hard to cut. Well, there's a trick. You stack them up from your largest leaf to your smallest leaf. I don't have a whole lot of basil here, so it may be a little hard to demonstrate. But you'll see me do this on other recipes if you guys follow my, my channel. Do it smallest to largest, then you roll it up. And it's not going to cooperate. But okay, we roll it up tight as you can. And then it's much easier to slice. And it makes nice little ribbons. As you can see, this basil is just it's weak. Hopefully next time I go shopping, I'm going to go to either the Giant Eagle Marketplace or Whole Foods and you'll see a much better quality of garlic or garlic and basil. But we're just going to give this a quick chop. Thankfully I had pesto so we can make up for the, the lack of garlic. And again, if we have long ribbons, it doesn't really matter. We love pesto in this house, or I'm sorry, we love basil in this house. So. A big strip of basil is just like, you know, hitting the lottery, I guess. So that goes in. Again, I would normally use a whole lot more basil, but I just don't have it this evening. But if you know pesto, pesto is basil. Basil, olive oil, pine nuts, and pecorino cheese. Nothing wrong with any of those ingredients. So we're going to go with probably about that much. I like a lot of pesto. If you hear sounds in the background, my kids are playing video games downstairs, having a good old time. My daughter and her boyfriend are home from college. The youngest son is down there playing video games, so you'll hear a little bit of hooting and hollering in the background, and that's all right, because I am at home. So I can tell you right now, I'm going to add just a little more salt and pepper. I can tell you does not have a, a lot of salt and pepper. I see my wife out of the corner of my eye and I'm gonna let her know up front she's gonna be tasting this here soon. So, yeah, you're gonna have to help me out and give it a taste, my dear. Um, are you recording? Yes, I'm recording, so you're gonna have to help me out. So I, have, I gotta go change my clothes. You gotta go change your clothes, you have to be presentable. Quick sip of wine. And I'm gonna clean up my workspace and we're gonna get our bread sliced. Okay, we have our French baguette, we have a little bit of olive oil, and we've got our brush. What we're going to do, um, oh, I do have my oven preheating to 450. Now, I like my oven good and hot, but I am actually going to turn it over to broil before we put this in the oven, but I like a good hot oven to start because um, I, I want the bread to get, um, you know, kind of warm, clear through. So, olive oil brush, got our pan. What we're going to do with our baguette is we're actually going to cut it at an angle to kind of get it to be just a little bigger see here it's like we're at about a half an inch or so we'll try to get those pieces as even as you can again we're cooking at home we're not in a restaurant so some will be a little thicker some may end up being a little thinner 
but we're giving it our best shot. Gotta love the French baguettes. I'm not big on French food, but they can make a baguette. Push this over out of the way. You can save more room. That one's a little thick, but oh well. The wife is upstairs changing. We're kind of we're sitting in our lounge pants watching TV, and I decided I wanted to make some bruschetta. Now what we're going to do, pour a pan over, get our olive oil and our brush. What we're going to do is we're just going to brush one side and that side's going to go down on our pan. So that way our other side will get brown, will get crispy, but the other side where we put our, our um, tomatoes will be a little chewy. So we just do this, set it on our pan, and we're going to do this for all of our pieces. All right, we're just about done putting olive oil on our bread. My wife has joined us. Her glass is about empty. So we give her the Italian uh, top off of the glass here. Get a little myself. Let's refocus our camera back down here. She's patiently waiting for me to finish the bruschetta because this is one of her favorite dishes. Now again, this is one of those dishes that's quite honestly better in the summer. You have better basil. I raise basil and tomatoes and we have tomato bruschetta gosh once or twice a week through the summer and it's just so much better you know I'm, I'm striking out because I didn't have very much basil to start with when I did have got mistreated in the fridge so we've got our our bread ready to go our oven is preheated i like a good hot oven to start i preheated the oven to 450 but i am going to turn it over to a broil i'm going to set it down to about 485 on the broil and then we're going to pop this in the oven now these are going to get done quick it's only going to take probably two or three minutes but we'll keep an eye on them all right we're going to check our bread real quick now, I can tell you, you can't really see it from the camera, but let's do this. It's almost done. We're just going to give it maybe another 60 seconds of this. Okay, you need to keep a real close eye on your bread because it will burn quick under the broil. And we just want it nice and light brown. That is about perfect. You can see in the light here. Just brown around the edges, hot clear through. This is perfect, so let's take it back over here. A um, couple ingredients I forgot to mention right at the beginning are a balsamic glaze and Parmesan, the most famous of the Italian seasonings and cheeses. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna turn our bread upright on our serving platter. The serving platter is from my daughter. She got us this for Christmas, God love her. So we get all these situated the way we want them and then we are going to top them with our tomato bruschetta and olive oil side up. Look at that. Couldn't have done better if we'd, have, if we'd have counted, which we didn't. All right. Let me throw this pan over in the sink. I'm going to grab the tomato bruschetta and be right back. Okay, I got our tomatoes out of the fridge. Give them a quick stir. We're just gonna top our bread. Just want just a little bit. This, these baguettes weren't that big, but big enough to hold some of our tomatoes. Just wanna plop as much on each one of these as we can. Now I am gonna cut away again and get these topped off and then be right back to show you what the final product looks like. We'll hit them with a little bit of Parmesan and balsamic glaze. Okay, we got our tomatoes on our bread. It looks really nice. Now what we are gonna do is top this first with our Parmesan. And the Parmesan really gives it like a more of a salty, cheesy flavor. And just be messy with it, don't worry. Again, that's why I have dogs. They take care of this. And you know, I'm shaking the camera and I apologize. It's really hard with this chest mount to get the cheese on there 
without shaking the camera. I do spend the extra money and get the imported um, Parmesan cheese. My wife and I are planning a trip to Italy next year and I keep jokingly say I'm going to buy a whole wheel of this stuff and have it shipped back. Um, it may be more than a joke. So anyway, that looks like we got just about enough Parmesan on there. Our balsamic glaze. Again, this is just Portoli. This isn't a great glaze, but it's it does the job. Just hold it up high. And that's about enough glaze. As you can see, looks really good, very presentable. Um, so we're gonna get this on some plates, serve it up, and give it a shot and see how it tastes. So this is the best part of cooking, sitting down with your wife or your family and getting to enjoy what you kind of work to uh, work to make. This looks really, really good again. I wish we had some fresh tomatoes, but we have fresh wine, nice yeah. red wine. Here. Good Chianti Cheers. Classico. So let's dig in and see how well we did. Now, how you did. How I did? Okay, mm -hmm. how I did. The great thing about bruschetta is you get a test to see how good you are at eating bruschetta and how much of it you wear and how much you actually get to eat. So right. let's see what we can do here, right. honey. Mm. Mm. I heard some hit the floor, I believe it was from mine. So this is really good, yeah. really simple. Just a few, just very few ingredients, tomatoes, fresh basil. If you don't have fresh basil, we use pesto. Salt, pepper, shallots, garlic, and olive oil. I'm Brad. Anyway, thanks for watching. Now, I have been putting these out kind of quick right now. It's going to go back to weekly before much longer. I just wanted to get some content out there on my channel to get folks interested. We're going to slow down here very soon and go to uh, weekly episodes. But again, thanks for watching. POV Italian. To stay informed of uh, future episodes, just click the subscribe button in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Yeah, if you have any comments or you want to learn uh, to, how to prepare a particular Italian dish, put that down in the comments below. I'll read all the comments. Uh, don't forget to uh, follow us on social media. Uh, if you look on Instagram at instagram.com slash POV Italian, on Twitter at twitter.com slash POV Italian, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash POV Italian. If you'd like to contact me by email, you can uh, contact me at POV Italian at gmail.com. You know, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you later. Ciao!